in 1972, I was not a disciple of Christ. I was a high school athlete with one interest and one identity, and that was to be an athlete. I ate and drank and slept for competition. I had grown up Catholic, and I could tell you a few things about Jesus, but I was not committed to a personal relationship with him. I had turned my I wouldn't have turned my life over to him, even not even decided to follow him. But that spring, I received two invitations. First, from a group of athletes that I met at other Catholic schools, and they invited me, and my brother also invited me, to a weekend retreat called Teens Encounter Christ. They said to me, come and see. For some reason, I did. And at that gathering of high school students from all over the city, the Holy Spirit used a talk given by a speaker to change my life. I knew at that point that God is real and that God is alive. I made an adult decision to follow Jesus. In a new and a powerful way, a new identity arose in my soul. My identity was that of a child of God, a chosen son of God. Then it happened again. Not sure what was going on, I received another invitation. A friend invited me to a youth conference at Franciscan University. There at that conference, the Catholic Church I experienced was vibrant, full of hope and with power and love for Jesus. Brothers and sisters, because an invitation is, has a kind of vulnerability to it, associated with it, there's a vulnerability to the risk of the sender and the risk of the receiver. It's very exciting and life-giving. Today's parable is about invitation too. You see, Jesus understood the power of storytelling and he used parables to preach the kingdom of God. Our parable today, as reported in the Gospel of Matthew, is a bit shocking. Here's what happened. There was a king, a king, a king who gives his son a wedding feast. The king invites his guests, come to the feast, everything's ready. The guests find all kinds of excuses not to come. They don't come. And then the king responds. He flips out with an extraordinary anger and violence. He kills the invited guests and burns down their town. And then he sends a group to go out into the streets, invite whomever, the bad, the good alike, everyone and anyone you can find, bring them. And then this poor man attends with the wrong outfit, the wrong garment from which the king chastises him and throws him out into the darkness. What is going on here? Many devout people wonder what this invitation parable means. We begin to wonder about the craziness of the king. He's crazy. The violence and brutality is shocking. I understand the king's frustration that he does not, but it does not warrant burning down the city. I think this parable is a hyperbole. It's figurative language meant to shake us up, to grab us by the shoulders to get our attention. Hey, look, pay attention to the invite. Here's the spiritual realities of today's invitation parable. The king. The king is the Lord of hosts. The God, the Father, is the king. He has spread out for his people to share an incredible wedding banquet. His son, Jesus, wants to marry the human race and to offer to all of us a share in the divine life. His purpose is to unite the culture of God. Oh, the food. The food to be offered at this banquet is the best of all possible foods, offered at the best of all place, possible places. Look at the first reading in which parallels the gospel. 
on this mountain. The Lord of hosts will provide for all his people a feast of rich food, choice wines, juicy rich food, and pure choice wines. Best place, best food. Isn't that what happens here in the Eucharist? This is the mountaintop. This is the place. For those who send out invitations, it will be all the prophets who send out the invites. You and I are the prophets, the disciples of the Lord sent on mission. At our baptism, we were made priests, prophets, and kings. Sent, sent to invite, sent on mission to make disciples, to announce the gospel. We were provided with a proper wedding garment and clothed in Christ at our baptismal day when we were given the new life of faith. At your baptism, the presider said, see in this white garment an outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. Jesus invites us to love God and to share that love with others to come to God's earthly wedding feast, the banquet, the mass. At the feast of the Lamb, we hear the word in scripture. We receive his body and blood in Holy Communion. The Eucharist opens our eyes to those around us that need to be invited and accompanied on that journey to Jesus. I look at my own experience, my own experience of my friends coming alongside of me. The key to that experience is they were friends to me. They wanted a relationship with me. That's the key. And then they came with me. They accompanied me on the journey. We do the same thing at Alpha and our other uh, men's gatherings and our other events that we hold. We accompany each other. You're all here together with your friends and family to accompany yourself us to the altar, to the mountaintop. Living our faith, living our life of faith with the help of God's grace, we can then be part of God's heavenly banquet at the end of time. Brothers and sisters, the word of God is meant not only to be heard, but to be acted on. Doers of the word, not just hearers. The mission of the church is to invite others into a relationship with God, to make great decisions and commitments to accompany those along with us. Who do you need to invite into conversion? A conversion of heart through her church, the sacrament of the Eucharist, is a moment in this in a few moments this congregation will come to the altar to receive the body and blood here. Jesus Christ extends the invitation to the banquet here. Listen to your heart. We can only refuse transformation, but he won't stop. He's like a lover. He just keeps on initiating, keeps on coming to us. Oh, how he loves us. We are called to embrace a change of heart and to celebrate that new commitment by inviting everyone to the banquet of Christ's body and blood. The reality is our churches have been shuttered for three months. People deeply need this encounter with Christ. They are hungry. Everybody can come to the table. God keeps on offering this invitation he loves us. A celebration of love surrounded by joy, peace, and good food. <laughs>